Hello, welcome back to the Sterling Engine project. So last time uh, in the video, we, um, we managed to get the engine running a bit better and a bit smoother. Um, so we thought that it was a good time to actually try and get a power reading from the engine. Um, I'll take you over the setup a minute to try and uh, get that reading. All right, so here we are, ready on test day to try and test the power of this thing. Um, I've knocked up a, a dynamometer out of some old pallet wood. Um, it's a bit of a Heath Robinson affair, but hopefully it will do the job for the day. So I'll take you around uh, what's going on here. So this is a caliper brake off of a push bike. Um, and this is actuated by this, a brake lever. So that will break the, um, uh, break the engine and slow it down. So the pivot point um, is as good as I can get in line with the um, the axle of the flywheel or the crank axle um, um, and I've got the I've got a pair of scales here <laughs> so what happens is this is this so is pivots like so and this goes on to our set of scales here so just uh, get them to zero there we go so we zero our scales in its static state so when a um, when you put the so when the flywheel's turning, if you were to apply the brakes, the scales would go up. So this is actually going to be measuring the torque of the engine. So as we're slowing it down with the calipers, it's going to be applying a load onto the uh, onto the scales. Once we've got our raw data from this, we're going to actually going to have to calculate this into a torque figure. Um, so the torque figure we're going to use is uh, pounds per square foot. Um, Obviously, you'll notice this is a little bit longer than a foot, so we're going to have to do a correction calculation to make uh, the torque figure correct. So that's that side of things. Right, the other side of things is I've got a, a sensor here. This sensor is actuated by a magnet, and the magnet is is here. I've stuck it stuck it to it, and as it goes, it's got a little light on it. Got a little light on it so as the magnet goes past it actually actuates this sensor like so and this cable goes all the way down to our readout so as i move this we get a reading of revolutions per minute So hopefully that, that setup will give us a, um, a basic uh, reading for the engine. I appreciate it's not particularly scientific, um, but it will certainly give us an idea. And, um, and that's all we really want to know, really. Um, I anticipate that the engine will give out about 200 watts. So um, we shall find out. All right, so we just lit the fire. Once we've got the fire going, I'm going to put some coal on it, just so it's a bit more consistent and we can concentrate on taking readings rather than keeping the fire going. While we're waiting for the fire to get going properly, um, I'll just do a, a little trial run of how we're going to be taking these readings. Yeah. So I'll start the engine up. Alright, so you can see the tack I'm onto that. So we're 83 or 90, 90 RPM at the moment. We've got our brake here. We've got our uh, scales set to roughly zero, so we apply the brake until we maintain a steady, let's say 150. So we're going to go for 150, and then if we look at the scales, we can see that it's uh, uh, 10 ounces at the moment. So again, we're maintaining 150 RPM out there. Trying to keep a steady, uh, steady pressure on the brake lever. So obviously the uh, so the weight reading is right. So once again, we're about 10 pounds to maintain 150 RPM. So what we do is we'll write that down um, for 150 RPM. And then we'll be moving up to the uh, the next speed rating, so that'll be 200 RPM then. 
Right, so we've got a lovely hot fire now. So we've got the coals in there. So we're ready to go. So nobody's of any illusion how hot the fire is. There it is. So we've, we've tried as much as we can. That's hot. So there you go. That was uh, fun for that day. Um, it's now a few days later. So I've got all the data together um, and come up with an actual result. So I'll show you that right now. So here's the, the data from the test run. Um, I did this in Excel. Um, all the numbers are being rounded up to the nearest decimal point. So looking at this at 350 RPM gave our highest output. Um, so that's just over a quarter of a horsepower um, and 191 watts um, in all fairness. So I think uh, it's basically around 191 watts. Um, some of the data is a little bit inconsistent. If you look at 300 RPM, um, that's only given 0.14 horsepower output. But if you look at 250 RPM, it's given 0.20. Um, so I don't think the, the test apparatus was um, that accurate, um, but it certainly gives us an idea. Right, so assuming the um, results are kind of something like it, um, obviously I said at the start that the um, the whole measuring rig is a bit of a Heath Robinson kind of affair, um, but hopefully it gives us some kind of idea. Um, so we've uh, the engine is a quarter horsepower engine, um, and it develops almost um, 200 watt, but not quite. Um, but then again, it's uh, I don't. With the measuring equipment i don't know how accurate that was so um that gives us a fair idea <clears throat> um again that's obviously not that's not much power at all um originally i envisioned it with quite a bit more power than that but um a few things have come to light as i've been building and designing it um that, that stop that happening um i mean as far as sterling engines go in that's actually not too bad power um considering the, the swept um, volume per minute um so i'm quite happy in that respect um there's a as I've been building it, I've recognised a lot of um, improvements and um, changes that could have could uh, make hell of an effect, really. Um, so now I'm actually looking at building another engine. Um, I'll probably have a little rest from doing this for a little bit and then do something a bit different. Um, but there you go. I'll, um, I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Cheers, bye.